right, it's time for another vlog. It's actually way past due. Um, honestly, I don't really feel like making one, but I'm gonna do what a good friend of mine says and I'm gonna push through it. We're set up out at the playset, and uh, I got my little industrial set built here. But tonight we're gonna shoot some insert shots of the goggles and the quad. Little $30 smoke machine. And it even comes with a remote. Good old spray paint, because I have tons of spray paint. And I'm always buying different colors for different projects. And uh, we just light it and make a flame. You want the logo as well? Not, no, I don't want to see the logo at all, actually. Even a little bit? No. No, because we have it in like eight shots. Let's see. Yeah, so you're just kind of racking from the goggles to the quad. Today I'm going to talk about the Hype Cycle. The Hype Cycle is something that was created by Gartner Inc. It's a graphical representation of the excitement and um, kind of the activity and awareness around an emerging technology. Kind of the perception of it seems much more, much bigger than the actual market is. Why is this relevant? Well, it's mainly because the industry that I work in, uh, which is high performance drones. These are uh, racing and freestyle quadcopters that um, have gotten quite popular over the past two years and uh, the whole sport has emerged from the hobby and it's a really interesting time right now and I find myself talking a lot about the hype cycle and I thought if I make a vlog about it then I can just send people the link and I don't have to type it over and over and try to explain it poorly through text or messaging systems. The first phase of this hype cycle is what's called the innovation trigger, or some people call it the technology trigger. These technologies can be things like 3D printing, vaping, smartphones, and if you want to go back, even things like uh, personal computers or portable gaming. At the early stage, when it first emerges, it's, it's typically something that gets a lot of publicity and a lot of excitement but it doesn't necessarily have like a commercial viability about it. It's something that is exciting because it's interesting. People can see uses for it, but there's not like a common agreement on uh, here's how to use it, here's how to produce it, here's how it integrates into society. Okay, so phase two is the peak of inflated expectations. I personally think this is the phase where FOMO happens, the fear of missing out. People are going to be so afraid that they're going to miss out on this new boom that they're going to invest everything. It's so much more interesting than their current job or their current um, industry that they're working in so they'll see it as a new opportunity that might solve that desire of freshness. The people that jumped in early spend all their money but it's the emotional high of this whole hype cycle. So you're gonna see news stories, you're gonna see people starting businesses. At this peak is we're gonna see people dumping all their money into a business, betting it all. People are gonna see the activity, they're gonna get excited, they're gonna start companies, they're, all these little startups are gonna pop up everywhere around this new technology or innovation. Phase three. This is the most important part, listen to me. This is the trough of disillusionment. What happens when you have a high? You have a low, you have a crash. Well, that's what's happening during phase three. The people that got in early, if they don't have a sustainable business model and they base it on the hype, they will lose. This is what I keep trying to tell people. I would consider this the filtering phase. And what people do is when they see momentum slowing, they jump ship. So you have the people that were half committed or didn't really have the resources to stick it out start to die off or get distracted and go do something else. It will stabilize, but the big questions are um, how long will it take and what will it look like once it's stabilized? Right now, in the trough of disillusionment, it's a dark, 
negative, scary space. I do believe that's where the mini quad industry is right now. I think we're starting to head out of it. Uh, there's some glimmers of hope, and I'll talk about those in the next phase. Phase four. This is the slope of enlightenment. See, see what I did? It's brighter. This is when the second and third, maybe fourth generation of these products starts coming into the market. People start to see how this stuff fits in the market and how it can work. And, you know, they start to improve on the designs, refine the designs, and it starts to get accepted. The investors uh, will start cherry picking the winners. So the slope of enlightenment is where it starts to finally stabilize. It's still a little, you know, people are still figuring things out, but it is stabilizing. The plateau of productivity. You're gonna start seeing it become widely accepted. This is when it becomes very productive. Um, so now people can kind of focus. There have been standards established, systems created, and now it's a normal thing. Okay, I wanna make something really clear. The hype cycle does not represent the monetary value of the market. It is not representing the amount of money in the industry or the actual earning potential or any of that. So the actual perception of the industry and the market value of the industry start to run in parallel. So that's why it becomes more productive because now people start to get a more realistic view of the industry. I just showed you the rough cut of my vlog. What was your takeaway from it? The hype cycle isn't numbers. It's not likes. It's trying to take something completely abstract, which is a group of people's thoughts and putting it to a pattern that you can see a plot that applies mostly consistently to any sort of new technology or idea. Is there any value in that? In knowing that? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It helps you to put things in perspective so that you don't get too emotionally invested in something up front or let the initial drop worry you too much. Wow, that was it. I hope I didn't lead you to that, but that was that's the point I'm trying to make. Well, you made it, I guess. <laughs> Um, if you guys like to see my vlogs like this and you want to learn more about my process as I go, um, let me know. So thanks for listening to me ramble for, uh, I tried to keep it under 10 minutes. So hopefully, okay, I'm going to work on cutting out so and um, it takes forever when I'm editing. Okay, rant done. And I'm going to stop saying okay too. Okay, so, um, I'm done. Bye. Does he look like daddy? Aww.